1201, so let's call this meeting to order. Thank you everyone for being here today. And uh, I guess we'll go from. You guys have anything under the welcome thing or? Just welcome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> on this rainy day. Yeah, just, uh, yeah. I'm glad you guys are here. Yeah, and if we had guests, this maybe we'd get up to. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And then we move on to Farmer's Market today. We're excited to have you here. Thank you. So, um, Market, we're still accepting applications until April 1st. Um, so, as usual, we have vendors waiting till the last minute. So, um, but we still have, we're getting, they're trickling in, but um, expecting to have the same amount, if not more, vendors than last year. A um, couple new farms, which we're excited about, because that's been something that's been a little bit harder to be able to get folks to come out. So, hopefully, to be able to have more produce available to the community. So, um, and that's going to open up first Thursday will be Thursday, May 19th will be the first day of the market. What is it again? Thursday, May 19th. The hours are the same for three to seven. Same hours, yep, three to seven. So regarding the market, that's pretty much the only update we have right yeah, now. Sure, yeah, more the, the events for opening day will start to yep. come together. Yeah, potentially next meeting we'll have some more details about what we'll, we'll be doing that first two weeks to draw people in. So. Well, and this is kind of the time of the year where central business starts to get those updates. Mm -hmm. and, so, and, uh, and I'm really glad to hear that. So can I, since we're under the farmer's market update, I have uh, a kind of comment to say about this. I think it was fabulous how the farmer's market did so well last year. You guys did a fantastic job, and he, he definitely showed. Um, the, one of the reasons even, uh, it was even mentioned recently in council, one of the main reasons why even the farmer's market started was because to bring people downtown Christiansburg, and obviously we moved it, moved it to the rec center because of Hickok Street having to be shut down for different reasons, and plus, it was really not doing what it was supposed to be intended to do. And I have been thinking a lot about this farm thing, because the farmer's market, because don't get me wrong, I like it. Like, I enjoy it. You have seen me there with my children. But one of the things that you really, and maybe since you were part of the farmer's market before, I like the fact that you're here, by the way, as far as even that having that inside. But, one of the things that has really kind of uh, shifted my thinking about even the farmer's market within the last several years is that one of the things that we have done the farmer's market as well is kind of like copying what other places are doing around us, and they have been successful at it. But there is real reasons why those have become successful, you know, dates and you know, a lot of the things is that you may have more farms around it within your community. There is less, you know, uh, there is more walkable spaces uh, than Christians were has. Uh, for example, in Glassboro, you got the Virginia Tech. It's right next to you. So you have thousands of kids walking through your sidewalk every day. So as far as the accessibility is there, you know, Salem is a huge, it's actually a pretty large city. They have a lot of facilities, you know, a way for people to come to the downtown and walk and have that great experience. We're trying to compete with something that doesn't really exist. That, that just, it's like battling something that is even making people upset in the community. Why? Because if you have a barbecue car, you're going to be upsetting the barbecue person that has a real safe place in the town. If you have a pizzeria that comes and sells pizza at the farmer's market, then you're competing with everybody else that has a pizzeria in the town. You know, it's not that I'm against having food trucks. I, I do think they're great, and I think they bring people. And it brings a different experience, you know. Seeing it from a business owner standpoint and seeing it from a perspective of what are we trying to do here, not that I want to cancel the farmer's market, but maybe we need to shift into something. And this is just an idea. This is just me coming out with this idea. Maybe let's open our minds to think, what about if instead of being a farmer's market, we have an activity market? I'm more than sure it will be a lot easier probably for you to find craft people that do things or in the community, maybe more candle people, maybe more 
It's stuff that people can make in the town. And it, we don't really have to outsource that. And maybe we'll become the central location for something different, you know, that nobody else around us has. And all I'm asking is for you guys to even help me come out with ideas out of the box. Because right now, I feel like even when Shaw Walter made a comment to us, and he's truthful about this. I mean, I don't disagree with him when he's telling us the downtown is dead. I don't agree it's dead. I agree that, that I think that downtown has shifted into a different kind of market. It's not your walkable market. It's a place where people have office spaces. And so how do we work with them? I do like the activities in town that you guys provide. The rec center does a great job. We have, you know, the rock and roll thing. We have the Kawana thing. We have the Christmas market. We have the Christmas and whatever. All these activities are great. Let's do more of those, maybe. Um, but um, let's not recreate the wheel here. Let's try to think outside the box. And that's just me. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think those are all really good thoughts because it is something that, you know, we kick around, you know, the idea of, okay, what it, what is, you know, what is the purpose of downtown? You know, the, the market really is supposed to be that, that an economic development community, economic mm -hmm. development generator, uh, you know, because you want to support other businesses downtown. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and what is the role of events? Events can have a role, but at the same time, the downtown is not an event center. It is a place of business, you know, and of, of activity and cultural significance. Uh, and we want people to be visiting for those reasons, for tourism reasons, for business reasons as well. And it's, it's not simply, the, the events are important, but we also have to recognize how that inconveniences everybody else that's trying to do, you know, their, their business on a day-to-day, -day, you know, um, in the day-to-day -day situation. So I think, yeah, those are, I think that that's kind of all you know what we've been grappling with, like with the um, with the placemaking plan, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and just and really uh, our urban development area plan. You know, all these plans really try to try to capture how do we we guess that, and I mean, and how do we capture that? And um, and, and we you know I think it was three or four years ago with the placemaking plan, and even before that, uh, the, the question was. What is downtown? What is Christiansburg downtown? What is, you know, so you're still trying to define it. And I, and I think we, you know, we can get there, and that's, that's partly what the rally grant was about as well, you know, and, and trying to, you know, define a community gathering space there. Um, and uh, so I, I think, yeah, they, they, those are all great thoughts. I think, you know, with the community gathering place downtown, you know, once we get the arcade built, we could have, you know, like a, like a um, different types of markets. It doesn't just have to be a food market. I think that speaks to your activity. And I market. think, you know, and I think when we talk about this arcade, we're talking about something that we don't own, something that is not. Owners change their minds all the time. You know, well, the structure would be yeah, the town. Yeah. Yeah. What? The, the arcade itself would be the town, town owned. That, uh, for Hickok Street? Yeah. I thought that was going to be inside the building. The, the, out, the outside structure that will have the cover and vendors can sell under it, all, all of that is going to be town-owned property. Yeah, but the store itself, what's going to be inside the business? I thought that was going to be an arcade inside of it. Well, we refer to the arcade. That's basically just the structure, the farmer's market oh, structure. Oh, you're just talking so about the structure. I'm thinking about it. It would look a lot like what Floyd Okay, like, got it. You know, kind of running perpendicular to the main street. Uh, it, would, uh, it would kind of look like... Well, like the city now, city we can... Yeah, yeah. Right. Can we do... And this is just... We keep talking about this grant. The grant is $250,000. is not a lot of money. 275000 To me, I mean, when you talk about doing things in the town, that come, becomes pocketbook money. You know what I mean? It's not like we can build a huge structure that we can call it a, a museum or a coliseum thing that is going to have a coverage thing for 275000 So thinking about that, I mean, 
can, can that money be, what I'm trying to say is, the really no that Hickok Street closure of Hickok Street completely is a disaster for offices and people downtown. If it's completely closed, then I don't think that's Yeah, that's what I was saying, if it's completely that. closed. Right. Now, if you, I think the whole thing about opening, I think when we first started, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when he first started on the Thursday, when he was opening temporarily and shutting down after, I don't think he caused any commotion. I think the majority of people could deal with that. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's just like any other event in the town. I think everybody was like, okay, this is an inconvenience for a day. We can figure it out. You know what I mean? When he shut down for the whole time and we're not doing anything with that, it's when it became a problem. Same problem is going to happen now. Let's first say that the streets finished today. You're going to have to shut down. What are the plans of this, futuristic plans of this? What what you guys have in mind as far as the farmer's market downtown? I saw well, your plans. It, 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 yeah. And, it, it, I mean, that's right. not going to be open every day. So we wouldn't be shutting down the street. And that, that's why I think you're going to be on that or, uh, or committee as well that, that mm -hmm. finalizes the design. There would still be three-way traffic. And there, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we would, we would propose Both ways, right? Traffic. Well, we would need to look at the, at the dimensions there, you mm -hmm. know, for the ultimate design. Uh, but we do have a really fortunate position in that we are leveraging, you know, the, the Hickox Street drainage project. And we, I was just on a call this morning, to, we're trying to figure out how to marry those two projects so that they complement each other. Uh, and and there, there are some contractual issues. One is, you know, one has to follow all federal rules and the other has, it just has to follow state rules, so the federal rules are more encompassing. So, you know, so it's a little, it's, it's a little tricky to try to navigate, but we, I think it, it's a very, it's a position that the town could be in and what we're trying to guide towards that, that this project would be done, you know, for free you know, for an additional space downtown. And then what the town makes of that, um, I think is ultimately up to the town, you know, for uh, for how many days a week would you host a farmer's market? Uh, how, how many other days would you have events? Um, how could it be used during uh, our regular uh, festivals as well? It could be, it could be, you know, utilized during that time as well. It could be used during the Christmas market. You know, I, I think that that's all for us to decide how much we want to embrace the space of our community. Do you guys have um, anywhere here to wrong here? I haven't, I have only seen this in other places. Like in South America and Central America, the majority of the malls have roofs that open during the day and close during the night. Or during the storms, they close down, and during the, a warm, sunny day, it's open. Can you do something like that on a street like this? Have you seen anything being done architecture around here? I can't think of any examples. When, you know, I mean, you'll, you'll see old, old farmers, you know, old markets in cities that are kind of more atrium-like, but usually that's, that's not on the city street. But we're kind of getting ahead to the community gathering place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Can you tell me about your farmer's market views as far as you're dealing with it today? Uh, how do you feel about, instead of doing a futuristic, thinking about the future here, mm -hmm. instead of doing a farmer's market, an activities market? I think right now, I'm talking about like the different type of vendors. We currently do have crafts. Um, we have people that make their own jewelry, some that do baked goods and all. All those things have to be locally sourced within a hundred mile radius. So we already have that component. Um, we could switch focuses a little bit to where we still want that produce but also yeah. encourage more of those other pieces. Um, I think there definitely is a need for the produce aspect. It's hard to argue with four to 700 people attending during the market season. Um, and to take that away, I think, would be something that would be difficult and to do. And I don't want to take that away. Right. What I want to do is 
people have made comments to me in the past, I think, that you, that it was one of their comments was, you have a farmer's market, you got one farmer. You know, obviously that's not what, I, I saw more than one farmer a lot right. of the times, but even Sam Bishop said a couple of times, like, we need more farmers. Yeah. We need more farmers. Right. We do have reports, like, I mean, even three years ago, where we have a week-by-week -week breakdown mm -hmm. of, of all the produce yeah. vendors that were there. You know, and so, so it's just, I mean, I think it's a matter of pushing back on that. You know, that we have, that's not true. You know, we have more than one producer. We're trying to get more producers. I think 2020 was difficult. But, but I think what I'm trying to say is, is that once you have a name or a label of a farmer's market, you expect a whole bunch of farmers. You know what I mean? Well, when you go to Blacksburg, there's like a whole bunch of farmers selling from eggs, to, I mean, everything that you can think of, mm -hmm. you know? And so, and then you come to Christians where it's like a whole bunch of candles and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that I'm mocking it down. It's that I want to make, so I hope you understand this. I'm trying to make your job even easier. Just trying to kind of like, how can we have all these people in under the same roof? Mm -hmm. But but then give a good image to the town and say, hey, we're not just a farmer's market. We're everything in between. Rachel, what's, what's the mission statement of the farmer's market? Does it have one? I don't know that it has one. Yeah, we can bring it up. I mean, we could work that and bring it back to you. I mean, I, I don't know if we... I'm, I'm not sure we ever have one. Right, either. yeah, because yeah. I mean, we had a farmer's uh, market committee for a while. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And... Uh, and then that they would meet about once a month uh, in the evening, and um, it, but uh, you know it is tricky to engage, you know, to engage producers and vendors, you know, because they're busy, you know, at the farm, you know, mm -hmm. so so we definitely want that buy-in, but it takes it takes time, uh, you yeah. know, to to build the, these types of things, uh, and, uh, and and I know. You mentioned Blacksburg. I know that that has taken a long time to build the way that it is today, and, and we're probably at a point that is probably equivalent, or even maybe you know exceeds where they were, you know, at the point when when we were there. I mean, it was it was basically just the side of a street, and you had to be in the street to, to buy anything. For a long time. It may be it may be helpful with the farmers market being moved once and will be relocated again um, at some point with with the structure and coming back to Hickok Street. It may just be helpful for the community to have more definition on what the farmers market's goal and aim is, right? Is is it here for the farmers or is it here for downtown, mm -hmm. right? And 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 you know parsing that out, I think is going to be very helpful to actually work with a mission statement. And then kind of have a body of work thereafter. Yeah. And we, I'm not sure if you were here during the local food, local places uh, session where we actually we had uh, you know people come in and we we started to define what the farmers market was. Right, that might have been before me then. Yeah, okay. I can get that out okay. to you all. That that may be good. Because and then, look at. because I know when I when I was working with it, I know that many of the farmers really wanted to keep arts and crafty stuff to a minimum uh, because because it was a farmer's market, not an arts and crafts fair. And so, in fact, when we used to have a farmer's market liaison, I remember Luke Brew used to do that way mm -hmm. back when, and, and he had said, he's like, you can have them, but you, you, like, keep it less than 10% of your, of your overall market. And that was, that was the wish of the farmers at that point. So I think, I think we just need to see exactly what the goal of the farmer's market is. Who is it serving and why? Is, is it first for nutritional food and access? Is that the first priority? Is it is it to revitalize downtown, yeah. right? I mean, it, it it wants to do all these things, but I think I think we need to just parse out what that looks like, and that as we see these changes come down the road with the farmers market, because we don't anticipate to stay at the rec center forever. What does that look like? And and I think that having having that spelled out, and and maybe there's language to that effect already that we just need to look at. Yeah. You know that that will I think inform the direction. And, and kind of looking at how we get community buy-in with what the farmer's market is, can be, should be, et cetera. I know as a department we've talked about, you know, from our standpoint, we really want to focus, and I believe personally in this too, of the accessibility of fresh produce 
to people. Mm -hmm. And by ways of that, it's also supporting the farmers, which is right. a great benefit of that. But being able to have people that can right. come up there, they can ride the bus up there, they can walk there, whatever it may be, and have access to fresh produce when they normally wouldn't. Right. Or they would pay more at a grocery store for produce that's not as fresh. Right. And so that's something I know that we really you know, believe in. Now, where that falls in the list, Right. You know, for council and, and for the town as a whole, I'm not sure, but I know that is a point that um, we do believe firmly. Are you guys are still being able to give out the, the credits to people that have? Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, we got so the grant again. they pay $10, again. they get $20 of? Yeah, we match up to $40. Right. So we Which did I get mean, that grant for this you know, year. And I'm just telling you from what I heard from people in the past where they were talking about you, you know, there weren't even conversations where they were saying, well, you competed with Waze, that's why the Waze went out of business, you know. And so, and I'm not saying that that was the reason, because you, I'm sure it wasn't. But I'm just saying, when we do all these things, I do agree with what you're saying. Having a statement that it really, really tells the people what we're doing and what our goals are and clarifying what that is, it really, really can send a good message. Because... We really, it's hard where we are with town where you're always going to hurt someone's feelings. Because, I mean, we're competing as a business, and we're not a business. Yeah, I mean, I think as far as competition goes, I think if, if we are, if, the, if people think the farmer's market is competing with local businesses, I'd say the farmer's market is doing something right. You know, um, and I think, and that means that then the farmers are really benefiting if that's if they're in right. that kind of conversation. And you're local, as and, well, so. and you're and you're sourcing local rather than a, a different retailer. So, and if that's if that's the main arching goal is for food access and getting that business in that way, then you know let's let's roll with it. You know, so I, I think when we provide a little bit of definition of that. Um, but what do you we'll consider that. local, Casey? Because well, it's 50 miles, right? It's a 50 yeah. mile radius. Is the but that is not within the town limit. So that mm -hmm. is, that's actually maybe a farm down in Floyd. That but they still have to pay the taxes in town because they, they make sales within town limits. Yeah. Right, so then those taxes go back to us. Right. So I, I think I think we're probably going to need to move on in the special mm -hmm. events here, but I think if... if the only, I think it's just consensus, really. Yeah, yeah let me pull that you know, report and get so, that out to y'all. Yeah. I know I'm an insider. Can I say some stuff? Yeah. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I live in Salem. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I think of Salem and Roanoke City's markets, one of the, something that sounds like you were getting ready to touch on is important is that they have facilities set up so that for the vendors, for the produce, you know, all they got to do is put their stuff out. They don't have to set up tables. They don't have to set up tents. Mm -hmm. They don't have to... It's just get to your area and place your product right. and start making sales. Uh, so I think that's important. Second thing is that if I'm, and I'm not a farmer, but if I'm a farmer and I wanted to sell something, what's important is that there's people there to buy. Mm -hmm. right. So bringing people down from crafts, and I might also add flea market, anything that brings people into the area is good news, even if they're selling other product, because you're getting people that are coming mm -hmm. that otherwise wouldn't have, mm -hmm. and they might stop by and buy some produce. Right. So anything you can do to increase traffic right. is good. Next, Salem and Salem in particular has First Fridays, where they have an event at the same place where the farmers market is. So that people are used to coming down to that area and having live music uh, and other festivities. So, um, and doesn't Roanoke have like the second Monday? I think they they first they want Saturday morning. Yeah. Oh, the market. Well, then yeah. they also have uh, an Tradition event Monday. at nighttime. Yeah, one at Elmwood. The, yeah. They usually a concert. Or something. Mm -hmm. And the next thing is Salem and Roanoke are on Saturdays. Is there a reason why we don't do it on Saturdays? Well, we really started as a Thursday market because it was more of a smaller niche market, you know, that we're trying to meet a day that, that wasn't, you know, met here in the area. And when they, when they asked folks, you know, Thursday was the best because we were also trying to hit folks up for, you know, the same folks, you know, the same vendors. 
you know, they go to Saturday markets, they come in here, and a lot of times, you know, they, you know, the, the vendors do have double locations, like, you know, a lot of folks that do Blacksburg and Florida, Blacksburg and Salem, you know, and so I, I think, I think that should be a goal for the market, absolutely, is to do a Saturday market. Okay, because you know, it makes absolutely. it more yeah. convenient for people that are working. Yeah. Yeah. I think we would really struggle with vendors, though, to be yeah. honest. And well, I, I think that's I know, but I think, yeah, but I think it is a matter of building reputation, and, mm -hmm. you know, if they have to hire a third person, and I think the reason why we didn't do it on Friday was because they're preparing for market on Saturday, right. mm -hmm. you know, so the Thursday seemed to work within the work week for, for them. And we didn't do it on Saturday because we would never be able to compete with Blacksburg's farmers. Vendors had to choose between Blacksburg and Christiansburg, and that's only be I mean that's just because Blacksburg has been established much longer. I mean we're talking what a couple decades, I think. But I think yeah, but when it started, it wasn't was even supposed to be that huge of a market. It was supposed to be like, oh, let's just try this out, whatever. And then it grew with, and they had a mission at the end. You know, it wasn't until too long ago when they really put it together and said, hey, we really want to do this. This is needed. So. Uh, I do like what you said. I do like about the flea market. Does anyone have a flea market in the area? Well, I mean, we, we would have to, we, I think we need to discuss that, you know, if, if that's something that you want to pursue because it, it, it does become a, a, a different type so of event. You know, let me, you need, let me, you need buy in from the vendors yeah. at that point. I, and, and, and maybe this is, because I think your point's well taken that you get, more attractions than one and bring it all to the same place. Yeah. You know, I just know that oftentimes farmers said, "Don't don't bring in the arts and crafts here. We don't, you know." And so you need you need the farmers market buy in if you want to still call it a farmers market. So and I think we, use, we probably have to have a zoning code change as well. Allow flea markets in the So here's a strategy that you may want to look at, and that is uh, have start off with a flea market on Saturday. Yes. And expand it to crafts. When there's a lot of traffic, open it up to produce. If that gains any traction. So that way you're not competing with the other products. Yeah. Use a different concept on those things. I really like that. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a flea market, it can be anything else. But I mean, a lot of getting the market to work successfully is utilizing the space efficiently. So if you're having food or vendors or whatever there, like, you know. Same, maybe if you can't do it on that day, do something different. And there's also parking available on Saturday that's not available on Thursday. Yeah. Exactly. Right? And you're not competing with the, you're not working around this office spaces. That is quite annoying to tell you the truth. When you had the farmer's market downtown, it was quite out of place because you're so used to doing, I work close by. And everybody, we all go to walk and walk to Macaroos or drive to Macaroos or drive downtown because we don't have enough time to go down to our town mall to eat. You know, so all these office spaces down, downtown, we all work until about five or six. The time I pick up my kids, my kids don't get home until almost five. You know, by the time they get out, they go to activities. They go to running. My children are... They don't get home until about 7. Mm -hmm. At that point, the farmer's market is closed down. I mean, I really had to make sacrifices for me to come to the Thursday. I and that's just sacrifice. me. I had to take off from here to go down there. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, so, I, I, I mean, I, th I think it's a fantastic idea. I think, I think it's worth looking into. I mean, working in Parks and Rec at one point, I can say, if you're going to do that, give them more reasons. Yeah. resources to do it because they're already stretched in as it is and you ask them to then do Thursdays and Saturdays right. if, in, in, in a busy season I'm just saying if you're going to do it make sure you give them the resources to do it so what you're oh, saying no. is having it two days a week well Start off. Right. 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 I, I, I think the larger yeah. conversation is you know is, is how do we accomplish you know what yeah what is, what is the, what are the goals of the farmers market you know and mm -hmm. uh, and then how, how do we accomplish you know the uh, how do we grow it to a point where where, we where, where it really is a community asset? And, and I Broadway think it does need to probably be on a Saturday. If, it, yeah. if, if, we want it, if we want to truly you know, realize the vision that I 
Because yeah. I mean, it's not like the downtown is dead because all the office spaces downtown yeah, so are pretty. Yeah, they're filled yeah, up. Right, yeah. I mean, we have very successful people downtown. You got engineers, you got architects, you got doctors, you got therapists, you got everybody in between. So, mm -hmm. and like I said to you, and you guys were talking even about that. You'll have the parking mm -hmm. available. Yeah. So that's a big issue. That's so that's just less farmers market and more place making uh, to to Absolutely. that space and how yeah. how how people sort of envision that space, which a farmers market operates in just on but just on other days. And I think that is a fantastic thing to look into, um, and how that the space itself then becomes the focal point. And it doesn't matter what day of the week it is. It's, mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's the place where they do X Y Z, right? Or even jelly um, competitions. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 You know, you can look at stuff that's out of the season. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Know. I mean, yeah. it's all produce. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. season, yeah. The rest of the year, right? yeah. And it's the small things that that were done when Hickok Street was closed. Is like did a Friday lunch, you know, where we set up some picnic tables and stuff. And it, mm -hmm. it was small, but it's really popular for a lot of the office workers mm -hmm. around there. So yeah. you know, trying to trying to engage the office workers on on weekdays is a strategy. Yeah. I mean, and, and that really. We'll put that it all goes back to that place. You know, and something else that you were talking about the farmers market. What about normally farmers market on Saturday? They happen really early in the morning. Maybe there is a way we can talk to those farmers, and maybe our farmers market doesn't have to start at nine o'clock, ten o'clock. Christians for like to sleep in on Saturday. We like to sleep in. So if we can, so on Saturday, there's a lot going on on Saturday mornings. Most people are doing soccer practices on Saturday mornings if they're not off. My children, all of them are gone on Saturday morning. So the farmer's market technically in the morning wouldn't necessarily work for us in the spring and the summer, even the fall. So what about if we talk to the farmers and see if there is a way, maybe they can go to the Blacksburg farmer in the morning and maybe they'll want us to come to Christiansburg and work for a couple hours in the afternoon. Maybe our farmer's market is from 12 to 2, or maybe it's from 1 to 3. I mean, I think there's yeah, just a lot to look into. With yeah, um, and, and I think we, we do have time, you know, because we're, we're going to, this year, we're sticking with the Thursday yeah. you yeah. Know, uh, plan. But I, mean, I do think for future years, it, it goes to, yeah, how, how do we make it a unique place that, that meets the needs of our citizens? And so, you know, and again, you know, talking to vendors is going to be critical, you know, because they're they're going to be the reason why people come to it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and and those Saturdays are long days for them, you know. And so to extend it, maybe you know, maybe appealing to some and, and not for. But others. even the one farmer had a problem with it. I mean, he's like, you know what? Today I have to take off. I cannot work in the farm because I I'm being here. You know, I mean, Thursday is a farmer's working day, you know, I mean, on the field, not yeah. on. I think every day is a working day for a farmer. Well, I know. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I have farms too, but I'm just saying on Saturday is more of a, we can sell the products. I mean, that's what happened even in uh, our own country. Everybody sold their products on Saturday and the rest of the night they were drunk until then Monday morning. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, one other thing is. Okay. But the idea is if you bring the, if you've got the customers coming, farmers will come as well because mm -hmm. they're chasing the dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's oh. true. So that's the, chicken and egg, right? Yeah. You know, a little bit of chicken and egg. Yeah. You get so, pay on Friday night. So go back to events. 10K, 5K. Bring people downtown to run the races yeah. and after, yeah. and while they're wait while they're watching dad or mom run or yeah. little kid run, then they can also be. Mm -hmm. Buying stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of this is not anything necessarily new or novel. I think it's it's all been talked about. It's quite frankly, I think a lot of it is bandwidth. Um, and um, and and how do we? I mean, sort of goes back to that larger picture of of, of place making. I mean, it, what would you know? And that's kind of why I wanted to use what regional commission did as a roadmap as well as we kind of run through things. So, I think. It's just making sure it's top of the mind, and as we can, put a, put a good foot forward on it. So, yeah. and maybe what is to say we we only do it once a month to study now. 
and we say we're going to do just like you say on the one first Monday. We'll do the first Saturday of the month. And we do an activity event, thing, slash farmer's market, whatever you want to call it today, craft, whatever you want to call it on the Saturday, and see what we get. Because I really think that every event downtown, no matter what it is, besides the farmer's market, on the weekends or whenever it has been done, it's very successful. Anything that you do downtown, any of the events, are well attended. People do show up for that. Well, and speaking of Saturdays, there's a lot. Can we, can we roll into events? Yeah, no. Because I know I'm looking at that clock. Yeah, yeah. So, that would be good. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll go down our list of upcoming events. Um, we've got our first spring event is Saturday, April 2nd. It's our spring kickoff festival that will be held in that parking lot of the Recreation Center. So we've got um, a scene for it, Dancing for the Decades. So we'll have a DJ um, that's playing like 70s, 80s, 90s music. Um, Blue Ridge Axe Throwing is going to come and bring their portable setup. So they'll be there um, so people are able to do that for free. We've got food trucks that are going to be there, cornhole tournaments that our interns going to be doing. Um, Iron Tree and Iron Heart will be there, as well as Bull and Bones will be there. Um, Kiwanis is the nonprofit we're working with um, for this round. So on social media, it's gotten a pretty good following so far. Um, so we're fingers crossed for weather, as Casey knows. <laughs> weather is everything. Um, as long as we have good weather, I think we're going to have a pretty good turnout, especially for our first time doing this event. So. Um, we're excited to have it, you know, in a really good spot. I think we go downtown a lot, and this location is centralized a little bit more, and so add a little bit of variety and, and something different that we haven't done before. So we're hoping for good attendance and good weather more than anything. So we'll have it that evening from 5 to 8. Quick question. There, there's no issues of having alcohol on a town that's property. No, there is not. Spoke to Randy about that in our special events committee. I think it can't be within a building, I believe is what it was, that ground. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Um, and then April 16th is our Great Easter Egg Hunt. Same as we've done prior to COVID, I guess. It will be at the Kwanis Fields, working with Kwanis again. They're going to get um, bikes for the kids. So we'll have eight bikes that they're going to be giving away to kids. And then we've got, of course, prizes and stuff. So we'll have that event at Kiwanis Field from 10 a.m. until about 11.30, roughly, depending on how many kids we have um, that day. So we're expecting quite a few people because it's been the events. We had it last year, but it was a drive-through. So we handed out bags and stuff for people in the year but prior to that. We couldn't have it all. So I think people are going to be excited to get back out there and, and have fun with their family in that event. If the weather is bad, uh, are you planning to go inside the rec center? Yep, we'll go into the gym. They've had, from my understanding, they've had to do that a couple of times yeah. before, and the kids don't care no, <laughs> as much as they still get that fun and get prizes and they candy do. and stuff. But um, we'll make that call the day before so that we can post it and everybody knows. But worst yeah, case think, scenario, we have to go in the right one. Time it was, I think the weather was fine the day of. It just had rained three days straight. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just kind of too muddy. Yeah. yeah. So we'll look at it that week, but hopefully we'll be fine. But if we have to, we'll move into the rec center. So. And then um, I know council heard last night from you, um, NRB Cares about the street closure on April 21st. Yeah. So I just wanted to bring that up that they'll have their event there. I'm assuming it was approved. It yeah, they have, have that. that. And that setup will be our existing bollards that we already have yeah. on the ground. And they'll just set up there and then at Commerce Street. Okay. Are you guys Good having question. trucks to block both sides or not at all from public works? At this point now, I mean, it, it would just be the bollards. The bollards, yeah, because they're steel. Um, and we could if we wanted to, but I don't know that it's necessary for that because it's the makeup. I think it's going to have a quite amount of people. It's, are they going to have police? They should have a Yes. Yesterday. They're going to have um, two officers that will be there mm -hmm. for the event. So. And then we've got our Rock and Main events coming up. So our first one is Saturday, May 14th. That'll be 5 to 9 p.m. And um, for that event, we have the Jared Stout Band will be our headliner. So they're from Southwest Virginia and have a 
pretty good following and are really starting to kind of make a move in the music scene, which is awesome. So we're hoping we got them right before they hit it big. So we can always say they came to Christiansburg. Yeah. So um, they're going to be our headliner for that evening. So we're excited to have them here. And then on June 11th, that Saturday, is our second Rock and Main for the spring. And we have Lynn Avenue coming um, out of Savannah, Georgia. They came last September, I believe. And we had a good, really good response. They have their own music and all, but they also do a lot of covers of Johnny Cash. Um, that's the, um, the singer's favorite um, artist. And actually, she kind of modeled her songwriting after him. And so um, people really seem to enjoy them. So they're, they're coming back for that June 11th event. So um, the location for Rock and Maine, at least for these first two, we're going to test it and see how it works. Um, basically, just to help balance the needs of downtown businesses, even though there's not many that are open Saturday, but we are going to move um, right where you see the 460 business sign. There is where the stage is going to be, um, almost facing Iron Tree Brewery. So we're going to have the stage there, and then the event will go down Roanoke Street. Um, technically, two first streets where we'll block off. And then down Main, it will go blocked off until Franklin, but we will really probably barricade it off at the PD. Um, but the street will be closed in those two different areas. So this will allow no disruption on the other end of, of Main Street. The only business that's open on this end on the weekends is the florist, and they close at noon. We won't start set up until 2, so they won't be impacted. So we decided in the Special Events Committee to try this layout and location see how it works. Um, we think it might actually be better than the other spot um, because Iron Tree Brewery is right there and so obviously they're going to get some business from that, which is I think it's going to be a great thing. They're of course excited for us to move down there at least for two events, but we're going to see how it goes logistic wise. There will be some kinks we have to work out. Um, <coughs> we won't know of until the day when we're down there and you know, things come up the first time you try it, but we're going to try it for May and, and June and see how it works. And the hope is that it's a good layout and we can use it going forward for any Rock and Main so that we don't impact those businesses as much as we have in the past, especially Great Road with having weddings and different things like that on the event on the weekends. We don't want to impact them or any other business. We want to bring people down there, if nothing else, to go into their locations. Because I know my office gave a lot every time we have yes. down events. Yep. And we'll have an officer station there to help people cross the road. So people are still going to park down there behind McAdoo's and stuff. So I don't think that's going to cause them to lose any business really from that. It's nothing else staff. We always walk to McAdoo's and get you know dinner or lunch while we're down there working. So um, I think it's going to be a good layout. We've talked about it a lot in our special events committee. So um, just wanted you all to be able to see it and, and see what our plan was. Awesome. Can we get a, uh, just a list of all the spring events? Yeah, it's the there's one posted on the website, okay. but um, there I can. There's a list online. Yeah, there's and then flyer. we got on the uh, Christine send us was it Christine or Emmy? They send us the update. Mm -hmm. um, right. The uh, that letter that we get. What is it? The monthly letter. Right. Right. Yes. They just published this list. Maybe two weeks ago. But it lists also um, spring cleanup for public works. And it's all on Facebook. Yes. Okay. Because I also yeah. made a post about the field day. <clears throat> and then we, of course, have our July 4th event. Um, we will have that on actual July 4th, that Monday. Same as previous years, 10 to 4, um, more of a festival type feel with arts and crafts, food trucks, of course, live music downtown. as well, downtown. Um, and then fireworks will be at 9.15. Um, shot off from the Signature Park um, into the same viewing locations as last year, Walmart and the mall as well. So, that one's still a little bit further out, but I wanted to let you all know we are doing it on the actual holiday. So. All right. Is that it? That's it. Thank you so much <laughs> for those updates. I guess we can Thank move to the WebCon mm -hmm. option. Yeah, so, uh, Basically, after we had talked, we had, we had discussed an option that, um, uh, that seemed pretty affordable moving forward, and then you all had asked for us to go back and look at um, 360 options uh, to make sure that, the, you know, is there an affordable way to do a 360 option 
and uh, to be able to have multiple views, you know, from, from uh, wherever we end up putting the cameras. And uh, so Craig kind of went back and really discovered that the first option that we thought wasn't wasn't great because um, it was an IP address issue. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, so. Uh, one of the things that I, that I call the nirvana that uh, unfortunately is not quite ready for prime time on outdoors is 360-degree Oculus or user mouse to pan zoom. YouTube has a feature that if you have a 360-degree video, you can click on with your mouse and you can move it so you can see where you want, whatever you want, and zoom in on it. Works great for indoors. We don't have cameras for outdoors that will stream live. So that's not yet ready. What can we do short of that until that becomes ready? As it will at one point in time. All right, we've talked about that intersection that's right where the uh, RV11 is, um, I-11 is. That um, there are four traffic lights uh, poles that go across the intersection. We put four cameras one on each of those overhangs, then people could look down one street, look down the other street, look down this street, look down that street, so they could have choice of four views um, if they wanted to. And we could do it relatively cheap because on the upper corner is where we have a fiber vault. So we already have network connectivity right there. So we could go, um, we could connect in at the fiber vault put in what we call a PoE or uh, power over Ethernet switch. Copper then going up the poles, which we own, place our cameras there, which should not be a problem because cameras are extremely lightweight. Weight, they're only a few ounces. And have so that them- That is a concern. Anything that we put on the, the mass, we always have to worry about loading mm -hmm. because of the wind shear that comes through. They're small, so they won't have wind shear. Uh, but I'm sure our engineering department will take a look at it and mm -hmm. confirm it. So we could have four cameras right there, and we could put it on a website very similar to what um, 511, if you're familiar with it, 511B dot has all those cameras on the road so that you can choose which camera you want. All right, so start small. Small is this. Put it here. Now, expanding this, and here's some things about, we'll finish on this. There's a type of camera that's called an on this camera, which what that means is that if we plug it in and have an IP address, we can, that's about all we need to put it on a website. No client, so nobody needs to click on any kind of client, or load down a client into the browser, they just can click and display it. Again, almost exactly what you're seeing on, on v Docs 5.11. You can click on any of those live streams and see what's going on at that time. They won't be able to control the camera, they can't, can't pan or zoom or tilt or any of that, they can just, Look, now, at the same time we're doing this, Billy Hanks is installing some new software that will enable him, if we have it, map cameras to where he's dispatching his vehicles. So he could see, if there's an accident he's going to, he could see, just like we do on 511, but on that intersection at that time. He could start growing this so that these cameras go out everywhere. At first, we wouldn't do any recording. It's going to be live stream. But the next phase, after you grow this, is now to throw a recorder on there so that the police can use it to see if an event occurred, like we had an accident, right? Intersection in front of here. We happen to be able to capture it. But we just, we were lucky that the accident occurred right there because it solved all of who did what. Um, but we could have cameras that go all over the place and be recorded uh, to support the police, the fire, as well as community development. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, yeah, I think, you know, and Craig and I talked about this, it really still is a tourism project for downtown right. with the ability to expand for more public service mm -hmm. capability yeah. in the future. That sounds yeah. awesome. What's the cost on this for the board? Each camera is about 800 bucks. Okay. And if what I think is true is true because I've tested, I was hoping to have a test site for you today. But we've tested one of our cameras and I can bring it up in a browser. Unfortunately, this one camera that we tested, the, the browser interface 
that it has when it allows you to control the camera. We don't want that. Um, but we're looking for something simpler. But um, there's if, if what I think is possible, then you're basically looking at $800 for a camera, then the installation, which is probably done by Public Works, just using band clamps to stick it onto the poles, plus uh, getting the cabling up there. Cables are like 10 cents a foot. Mm -hmm. um, and we would run it off of our own internet, which we're already paying for. Can we, um, I like the recording thing or whatever, too. I know that you said that. What will the cost be if we wanted to record it, or you need a different camera to be able to do that? These cameras will be, can be recorded. They just have to go into a solution like we have for the town. Mm -hmm. The town has a solution called Exact Vision. And so that camera is being recorded. We have several other cameras around the buildings. Yeah. Um, those are all recorded. We keep them for 30 days, and then we discard them. So, so, I mean, for this one, we can at least keep it for 24 hours. I'm just asking to see. I'm not asking for a month, but, you know, let's just say there was a rob. Somebody robbed something. We can at least have the footage within that first 24 hours, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, this camera, like we're talking about, it was this native. We want it for tourism, and obviously there are so many things that can help with. Um, is that a cheaper way or an easy way that we can at least have the ability to at least record 24 hours time frame? So, uh, the or cost can we have a computer set up where all it does is like, he looks at that and he just records as he goes for the, for the 24 hours on, I don't know. To record it would cost additional licensing on our exact vision or and potentially more servers. So I would say that uh, it would probably be in the range of $400 per camera per uh, year. Same for recording. recurring cost where if the 511, would that have a recurring cost? Uh, the host the they don't record either. But did, did that, even the host uh, no, so but that brings up one point about the hosting. We would host it. We um, would host five. We would, we would host the equivalent of five eleven. But yeah. what we'd also want, if once we grow it, not right okay. away, but in our in our walk, crawl walk run scenario, mm -hmm. crawl, we put it on that, put those four cameras up, mm -hmm. put it on a web page. People can see what's going on downtown anytime they want to, just by visiting the web page. Uh, but the uh, next version. I'm sorry, I'm having a senior moment. Your question again was? I just recurring cost, you know, oh, year, year to year, you know, well, there's, hosting or what have you. There's no recurring cost for that, but, well, yeah. okay, what you triggered in my brain was on 511. If we have multiple cameras, yeah. then we want to front end that with a map, just like 511 saying, here's here's a big map of Christiansburg. This dot is that camera, this dot is that camera, this dot is this camera, and people can click and see whatever they want to happening downtown. That's when we're... Streaming only with multiple cameras, which is suitable for fire, somewhat for police. Then we get into the recording stage, which is perfect for police. That's when we're talking about some significant money. Can I ask you something? Can we do? Uh, can we bring to council at least the thing about the four cameras, and then ask them and give them the option as well for the second thing, which will be the recording option and see if they will even go for the, because we may have town council members that will say, you know, we want the recording. Or maybe some of them will not think that, that you know, it's important to them. But I think obviously we, you thank you so much for your research. I personally feel like for me personally, obviously I'm not talking for you, but I'll give you your time. But I think uh, for me, I'm ready to go with the four cameras. Now, what about you? Yeah, I, I'm. I would. I guess if they come through the website, online foot tra online traffic. Would, you, would we know how many users there are looking? You know, could we say, oh, on this day we had 100 people that looked at the cam, you know, that used the camera. Would we have that data available to us? I'd have to talk to Civic HR who actually hosts our website okay. to see what kind of metrics they have. They right. should, because a lot of, because you know, a lot of websites do that. Right. Even they'll have little counters at the bottom of saying, "Yeah, it's been okay. so many times." Mm -hmm. So I know it's possible. Okay. I don't know if there's a cost, and I don't know okay. what's 
specific HR's capabilities are. Right. Uh, so keep in mind, uh, one thing that I didn't tell you guys last night is what we don't do. We don't do web development in my IT group. We don't have any developers. We're, that's the one thing in IT that we don't do. But that is my background. I am a web developer. From, I did Roanoke County's website, the first one they had. did my last uh, employer's website. So I know how to do websites. But I don't want to be a website developer. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and that was one of the concerns originally, in because uh, we didn't have that expertise on staff. You know, was was the security concern about hosting, and having on cameras. But we've gone through that with Eric. There's, we can lock it down. So we figured out how to lock it down. So that basically, what we're exposing out over the internet. Do what's called network address translation. So when somebody sees this this camera, they, it's, this, a certain IP address is exposed publicly, but the actual address of the camera is hidden. Nobody can see it's behind the firewall, so that no one can actually directly access it except for what we're we're sending out. So it it's secure. Um, I think I think we can probably. Um, so I I kind of want to pursue this to. A, a, an on this camera that's simpler, that doesn't have the control features so that we can plug it in and test it. I pretty much want to do that on my own as a skunk works. So, <laughs> so, so you're saying before ordering four cameras, you would want to get one camera? Proof of concept. Or, or you know, just proof of concept. Prove it, make sure it works, put yeah. one up, and if, it, and if it's right. what I think it is and you, if what you think, Yeah, you have a confidence in it? Then, yeah. then I have the comments to back it. So if it starts with one, just to see how it works first, then I, I think that's how we roll first. Since it's a hundred dollars, do we still need to get a town council approval on this? Well, I think it would be good to, you know, to um, before if Randy goes ahead and, and uh, you know, Greg and Randy you know, order the cameras because. It will probably be coming out of our tourism uh, dollars, is what we Randy and I discussed before, mm -hmm. and so it would probably be about forty-five hundred to five thousand dollars once you calculate installation and such. So, um, I mean, it, it would be up to the committee, but I, I would I would think that just getting the general head nodding from council would be a good thing to move forward. And I'll confirm with Randy; he, he may want you know just a, a quick council vote. Well, so here let me give you, let me tell you. So if we don't need town council's approval, mm -hmm. I'm okay with moving on today. Yeah. If we if Randy feels that we need to bring it to town council, obviously I'm okay with that too. So either way, I'm okay with it. Now, how do you feel about it, Kate? Well, like I said, I I think let's have the confidence that this is this is what we think it is, right? And then once that proof of concept is checked. Then I mean I, I don't want to bring this for anybody that needs to if, if if you come back and you say actually I found a bunch of problems with this it's not going to work so I'm going to say like I said skunk works means that I'm going to do about the same thing I did with the cameras in the town council is basically we did get a head nod that this is the direction that they wanted to go from town council and then we just made it happen and we figured out the money later and, but so this one would be. Uh, for a, a single camera, a hundred bucks. Get up, host, get it on the website. Maybe a few more hundred dollars to Civic HR, Civic Plus to put it on the website. Under a grand, it works. I can come back to you guys and I can say, here's exactly what it looks like. Right. Here's exactly what it's going to cost. Where do you want to go? And I think if the committee would want to recommend that today, you know, I'll touch base with one, but I think you'd probably be comfortable. Greg, go ahead, ordering that yeah. piece of concept camera. I'm okay with that. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Thank you for the research. Uh, that was exactly what I wanted. Yeah, it's very good. Mm -hmm. you say? Yeah. And then community gathering place. I think we've kind of touched on this. Uh, the next yeah. thing is, uh, you know, just we'll, we'll come up with a, you know, Johanna, I'll be reaching out to you and the other members, mm -hmm. uh, with Jennifer Wilson to come up with uh, some times to meet on that. And that's really all. We, we only updated our head on that. And then I didn't really have anything in the early business. At this point, I think. So, sorry, go ahead. I had um. So obviously, I talked to you in central business. I had a conversation where I felt like um, 
I really, really, uh, I would really like to see an event uh, when I spoke to Terry from uh, the aquatic center. Um, a need for having mural walls for graffiti or anything like that, art, and the skate park. When that came about, I was obviously, I went to the arts committee, I, I mm -hmm. talked to you guys during the arts committee, which thank you so much yeah. for allowing me the opportunity. Um, you know, I really like the fact that, you know, the arts committee, you know, it, was, it sounded like it was well received as well. Um, now trying to figure out the details of that, I feel like it also kind of follows into what central business does, uh, don't you think? I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I think I think the advisory board needs to kind of put the details together and then have it come before us. And I don't think there's been any details of how policy, procedure, or something like that would work. They, we haven't had any there's been no discussion right. on that. So I think that would be something that they would figure out and then bring to this committee for approval. Now, uh, let me ask you about as far as the location goes, because I know that I, I will feel like that will be part of this. And then we we'll get you guys to work on all the rules and mm -hmm. laws and restrictions, and that's great. <laughs> right. So, um, what do you guys? How do you guys feel about? You know the retaining wall that's holding the, the the aquatic center is between the creek and the aquatic center. And so if you're looking from the skate park, you could actually see the whole wall. There is some bushes and stuff over there that can be cut down. There's a lot of weeds and stuff growing too. But just throwing this crazy out there, idea out there, what if we were to designate like that wall and where it is like blocks uh, of concrete. I personally don't feel like it's very pretty right now as it is. Right now it's covered because you've got trees around them or whatever, but what if, and there is a space over there where you can walk. So it wouldn't be necessarily like a bad place to go and walk to paint or whatever, but what if we, we give it to the art committee and say, hey, what about this wall? How do you feel about this wall? And do you think that maybe we can have split up the wall into different sections? And if we don't like, we will get people to submit drawings for that for that wall. And if we don't like them, we obviously, you know, we can skip it. Well, that would be the art committee, I think. And then if it doesn't work, we can just paint over it. Do you guys even foresee in central business, do you guys foresee like having something like this brought up? I, I kind of need, I would like to see more spaces for people to express themselves. And I don't see like Christians for having the ability. Um, well, we have the one, we have the call for artists out right now and um, I don't know where we are on, on how many submissions so, so that we have. So on April 6th. We, we've gotten a lot of interest in social media. Okay. Uh, so we haven't received any okay. submissions at this point. That might be a good first test, a litmus test of how this stuff, how, how this actually works before we move on to other mm -hmm. spaces. And we use that as a, the first domino of the fall, see how that goes. And then other locations uh, can be mined, basically. Because that one, what I was thinking about, is not going to be perfect. You know what I mean? Like the one in Cambria, I'm expecting something, which by the way, I, I figure that it should be actually more than one mural because it's such a large wall. But I'm just saying just the fact that it's one, I foresee that the, and I'm not going to be a part of that group that, you know, agrees to that or whatever, but I just foresee something that's well done. You know what I mean? The one over here at the aquatic center, I'm not expecting for I'm expecting for young children to even submit this application. Do you know what I mean? I want a 10-year-old kid that comes out and says, hey, I do want to paint something. You know? Mm -hmm. I don't, I am not expecting that, you know, the 20, 30, 40-year-old artist that's going to come over here and make a beautiful mural. Mm -hmm. uh, those beautiful murals, we got money for that, and they can be spent in other places in the town. But what I'm looking at, Casey, is not something that's So you would anticipate not that it, it wouldn't be necessarily if, if a 15-year-old skateboarder is at the park, he wants 
he brings his big can and then goes No, to the it wall wouldn't be and that. It would be something where I would like to advertise it there. You know what I mean? To me, a drawing, and that drawing can be put up on your wall. And we can supply the, the materials. They can supply the materials. I don't think the materials will cost a lot of money. And I can say, you know, and I can personally myself, I will take charge of helping them. Not paint them if that's what they choose to, but I can help them manage it. Like, for example, if they need help with something, I can be there. I don't have a problem with that, you know? Um, do you foresee that, that maybe that's something, an idea that can be yeah, so we can take a look at the wall to see, you know, how much space are we dealing with? Mm -hmm. are, are we offering folks a five by five? Yeah, obviously, like a, yeah. I yeah, wanted like, smallest spaces. Yeah, so yeah. probably, you know, like four feet mm -hmm. maybe or even five feet. Uh, and, and, you know, because I do see being, that being a large space. And like I said to you, if it's not pretty at all, it doesn't really matter because it's not really visible, but it is visible. So unless you go down there and you're at the skate park, you're not really going to see it. You're not going to be able to see it from when you come to see the aquatic center. Do you particularly want it at the skate park, or would you consider like a traffic control problem? So here is my idea. I think that if we have something that is well planned on that wall and it goes well, then we can move it to the skate park. Because what I'm really nervous about is this for kids to come and use that paint and start painting the skate park? Mm -hmm. yeah, because you know you're gonna bring those paint, those can paints from there, and then you're gonna start painting, and you and because it's a skate park, you cannot paint the concrete. Right. Yeah. Because then it's a hazard for us, and yeah. it's for for mm -hmm. them falling and not paint, you know. Right, right. And so that that becomes a liability. Craig, I'm oh. sure it knows the pig on West Main Street in Salem. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the, the, there's a concrete pig, right? Like a statue. Mm -hmm. And it originally used to be a barbecue place and they closed and it got moved down, but somebody somewhere along the line, one of the others, had the idea that it would bring people in if they held, you know, competitions to paint the pig. So the pig is still there, probably fifteen it. years later. And oh, you know, there's much paint on it. People, yeah, right. Like I mean, it, it looks hard. It's it right there in the middle. Of, yeah. <laughs> it's well, you can see it on Google Maps. I mean, we mm -hmm. probably could look at it. But what happens is, you know, the it's like you're supposed to paint the pig. So you know, this time it's got, you know, this football team or that whatever. And sometimes you just paint it two or three times <coughs> a day. But people paint other stuff too. And so the whole parking lot got graffiti and on the curb and the sidewalk and the traffic signal. And so so you, you, I think you're correct to be concerned that it may spill over from there. Yeah. You just want to control it. And we want PD to be comfortable with it because yeah. it, is, it is starting to deface property and someone could get, you know, in trouble for that. You know, and really hate to promote that. You know. I mean, well, and then there is also the idea of it starting out with one wall. And it can be just like what we have the informational board that we have through the town, you know, at the Huckleberry Trail or whatever. And we maybe what we'll do is we'll start with chalk. We say if you use chalk, I mean, even if they paint the the, yeah. the bathroom, it's not a big deal. We can wash it off, you know. If they paint on the concrete where they're skating up, it's not a big deal. It can be washed off. And I think you know and. I'm I don't have I'm not against them even throwing all kinds of stuff on the ground on the skate park with chalk. I mean it washes off. And if that's gonna take someone's energy out, throwing all day to try to make come up with something cool, I, I don't have a problem with that. I want to see that. I want to encourage kids to do that, you know? Sure um, people has a wall like that. Yeah, we downtown. Mm -hmm. that, that got brought up in the mall area, right? And then, Andrew, you brought up a graffiti park in North Carolina, right? right. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, that was a really good one. I actually looked it up a lot. Yeah, cool. with the other eye, it's really cool. With the other eye, it looks like that pig. <laughs> we should look at the pig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
And maybe we'll start with some boards down on the on the trail thing on the one side where the Kroger's crash pit pig thing is on their parking lot. But um I mean there's a retaining wall that's falling apart over there between the skate park and the um and the dog store, whatever that's called. There's like uh, in between yeah, uh, the Kroger's the and uh, you know what I'm talking yeah, about, I'm right? Sure it's be what, you know, that should be See, that's great because you can't paint. Yeah, it's like board. a field with, with boards on it. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, I really do like yeah. this concept that they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And I mean, we can even, if that does well on Depot Park, we can even move it to downtown park. Yeah, I did think this was very cool. Yeah, was that already came? What was the town? Because I look like South Bay, North Carolina. My mother's birthplace. Oh. Right. oh, that's awesome. So I wonder if they provide, I guess we can look it up, if they can provide the, uh, the spray paint and everything else. Yeah, in that case, you could just bring it. That's, th those are like six buys and, you know, a big piece of plywood or something like that. Yeah. I mean, it might be a little bit, might have something fixed it's to it. It's kind of what I tried to do off of Depot Street. <laughs> then my whiteboard. That's sure my favorite. Can't what? Sure. Yeah. That would be something that, like, in Depot Park. Yeah. Cool. In the area between the two parks. Mm -hmm. Randy would like to see some. I really Maybe like this idea. Walk. Yeah, all right. That's what you I'm know. Yeah. And this is very inexpensive to do, too. I mm -hmm. mean, very inexpensive. And I tell you what, that park is so much usage. Depot Park. Became like the place go. And this this was sponsored by their downtown. Right, their their mm -hmm. DCI, DCI, which is now a city department. Mm -hmm. Like, um, that I think I think that is worth looking into. I think that that concept is a really good idea. I think it was left that we mm -hmm. bring some That's additional right. information to the yeah. next meeting. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. Thank you, guys. Boy Scouts and asking if they got an Eagle Scout that wants right. to do something. They've, uh, and we, we did that with Downtown Park, right? The you know why? You can even, yeah, you can you can even do on, church yeah. competitions yeah. and everything else. Mm -hmm. Company competitions. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'd be really cool. Yeah. Really cool. Hey, uh, I know this is probably on their Parks and Rec. I was talking to Brad the other day, and he actually he said that he will be interested to really see the bathroom downtown park, too. That it will be really good to have that. I'm not sure. <laughs> it wasn't mine either. My mind was. Oh. And so I was like, man, you can't bring anything. Um, even forgot my doll, but anyhow, <laughs> it's okay. But no, um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Anything else? That's it. Thank you, guys. Great. And I guess this maybe is the turn. Thank you. Thank you.